I sin nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain that I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain that I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain that I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me clean from sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain that I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Amen to our Wednesday night. Amen. Bible study here at Zion Temple Apostolic Church, 1531 Jefferson Street, Gary, Indiana. And praise the Lord to you as well. Amen. From First Lady Cinder Linda, Linda, Linda Reynolds and myself. Amen. We are greeting you and welcoming you. We want to say Happy New Year to everybody. Praise the Lord. Happy New Year. This is uh, the first uh, Bible class of the brand new year. Glory to God. God has allowed us, amen, to stay on the battlefield. God has allowed us to continue in the ministry. We thank God for just another day, hallelujah, that the Lord has kept us. Praise God. God deserves all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory for what he has done. And I'm sure that you are giving God praise too. Amen. I hope that you are grateful. Amen. And, and demonstrate your gratitude to the Lord. Amen. As uh, as the, as we at the church did. Amen. We, we prayed. We were on our knees praying. Amen. When the old year fled off the scene and the new year came in, we were on our knees calling on the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I heard, amen, in church service, amen, that while some were some were even on their knees thanking God, amen, all around them on the outside of their houses was gunfire, amen, and all kind of dangerous weapons going off. Some, amen, were firecrackers, amen, but all that noise is going on. But we chose to send up, amen, glorious rockets <laughs> of worship, and praise to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for one more day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for another year. We chose to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. I hope you did too, because we're going to need his mercy throughout the rest of this year. Oh, yes, we are. Praise God. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you that are here with us. Amen. Coming into our Bible class tonight. Amen. Uh, we want to also just remind, especially all the Zion members, amen, that we have embarked upon Consecration Month. 
Amen. Consecration month officially started today. Amen. Our fasting and our prayers, amen, special fasting, special prayer, amen, throughout this month, praise the Lord, amen, we're devoting and dedicating, amen, ourselves to the Lord, amen, we're seeking God especially, amen, in a special way for this entire month, and if you're not a member of Zion and you want to come along with us, come along with us, praise the Lord, amen, come along with us, I'm going to be announcing some uh some extra services or extra ministries, amen, going on. And as we pro progress through the month of January, amen, so stay tuned, amen. We're going to be giving some clues and uh, hints and some announcements about what uh, is coming up so you can be a part of that. Praise the Lord, amen. And don't worry, saints of God, amen, Zion, amen. Your daily scriptures are on the way. Amen. They are on the way. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've always, always rejoiced in God for the unity. Hallelujah. The spiritual unity that always seems to uh, uh, mold us closer together. Amen. Throughout the month and going into the new year. Praise the Lord. And, we, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be praying especially, amen, for our church. Uh, we're going to pray, we're going to pray even for ourselves, personal, for, for personal fulfillment of God's purpose in your life. Amen. Throughout your prayers, amen, during your prayers, amen, I'm going to pray that God, for you, you would fulfill God's purpose for your life. Amen. Praying for that, fasting for that. Also praying for our families. Amen. Pray, praying for the safety of and the supply and the health of our families. We're going to be interceding, especially this month. That's not, and not that is not saying, Amen, that we're not going to be praying out the rest of the year because we are, Amen. But, Amen, this special month of uh, consecration and uh, where special fasting and prayer is going on, Amen. And many of us were doing it. We're doing this at the same time. This unity fasting, this unity praying is going to be going on. And I just believe that God is, it hears our voices. Hallelujah. And he's going to send an answer. Amen. Uh, to our cries. Praise the Lord. We're also going to be praying. Amen. For the church vision. Amen. Uh, we've got a bit. Zion, we've got a vision. Zion, we have a vision. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we're praying. Amen. Uh, for the Lord to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Yea, we speak it into existence. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, I'm excited about it in the name of the Lord. Amen. And so we're praying for that. Amen. And thanking God for the unity that we all have around that. We're going to support one another. We're going to support the church. And of course, of course, amen, we still need your support. Praise the Lord. Uh, financially, monetarily, we still need your support. Praise the Lord. So still continue to give. And I want to express my thanks and my appreciation to all of those of you who have utilized, amen, the electronic method, methods of giving, amen, that have been a blessing to the ministry, amen, helping us to accomplish the goals and the vision that God has for Zion Temple Apostolic Church. Thank you so much for that. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And I know, and I just know, according to the promise of God, that the Lord is going to pour out a blessing upon you for what you are doing and how you are giving to the support of his work through Zion. God bless you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. I also want to thank the Lord for those of you, amen, that sent us, amen, prayed for us, wished us, amen, a happy birthday. Amen. We just uh, celebrated that birthday, the last of December, praise the Lord. And many of you, amen, have uh, sent uh, gifts, amen, and words and messages, both uh, text messages, phone calls, Facebook, amen. Uh, just the multitude of the well wishes and the happy birthdays. You help make my special day extra special. And I want to thank God for all of you that thought about us, thought about me during that time. May God richly, richly bless you. Bring joy to my soul. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you again so much. Praise God. And so, amen, uh, we're, we're going to be going into our, our Bible class. Praise the Lord. And we're going to start off with prayer. Let's, let's all get, our, get ourselves together and let's uh, go to the throne together in the name of the Lord. Father, Heavenly Father, Holy Father, Mighty God, Mighty God, Mighty God. Thank you, Father, for your loving kindness, your tender mercy, and your grace. Great God of heaven, hallelujah, true and living God, only wise God, to the everlasting King, hallelujah. We worship you, my God. We magnify you. We thank you, Father, for allowing us this privilege, my God, to minister on this platform, O oh Lord, uh, the word of the Lord, my God, to be employed in the business, in the service, in the work, my God, of encouraging and exhorting the people of God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you for the privilege you've given us. Uh, and including us into this ministry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, God, and now we pray, my God, hallelujah, that you would take charge and be in control, Father, hallelujah, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Let something be said, O God, that will minister grace to the hearers, my Lord, that will encourage faithfulness, encourage, my God, devotion and dedication to you, my God. O Lord, bless the people to go become closer and closer and closer to you, O God. Oh, Father, thank you for this privilege. I pray you bless, my God, everyone that's tuning in, Lord. Everyone that's tuning in, let a blessing come upon them, Father. Hallelujah. That will edify and strengthen and change their lives for the better. And we'll magnify you, Father, and praise you for victory. For we ask these blessings in Jesus' name and for the glory of God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're grateful to God again. For what the Lord has done, Amen. Uh, we're thanking God for for that, Amen. We are in our Bible class tonight, Amen, and we are uh, about to um, let's see here. There we go. There we go. Hallelujah! I knew something was amiss. Praise the Lord. All right, Amen. Our subject tonight, and we're continuing on this particular topic: commendable devotion commendable devotion praise the lord amen that's taken from luke chapter number seven verses 36 through 47 praise the lord all right luke chapter seven verses 36 through 47 and i'm inviting you amen to get your bibles out amen yes yes get your bibles out praise the lord we are about to go into the word of the lord amen have your bibles out I will have some scriptures on the screen. I probably will not have all of the Bible references on the screen. Amen. But it's good for you to have your Bible out and your notepad and your pencil. Amen. So you can jot down what the Spirit is saying to you. Praise the Lord. It's important that you pay attention and take heed to as to how you are being inspired through the word of the Lord that we're going to be talking about tonight. Praise God. I pray that you'll join with us. All right. Uh, if you will, then, we're going to turn, amen, to Luke chapter 7 and verse number 36. And uh, uh, we're going to uh, just read down to, uh, I read this, this, this lesson text, praise the Lord, and join in with me. I, and I will put this on the screen. It says, and one of the Pharisees desired him that... Uh, that he would eat with him. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. Let me move this a little bit. Here we go. And he went, talk about Jesus, he went into the Pharisee's house, sat down to meet, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears ah, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head 
and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Mm. Now, when the Pharisee which had bitten him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering, and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. He says, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, one owed uh, 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, Simon, he's talking to Simon, tell me therefore which of them will love him most. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Ah, now, now here comes Jesus. He put putting the, the, the story, amen, to the application. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, See thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gave me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gave me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. And here, check this point out, check this statement out here. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Ah, see, see, now, now, now. Amen. We are seeing something here. Praise the Lord. This And this is really the meat of, uh, of what I want to address here tonight. That statement. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And you just saw how that uh, uh, Simon, amen, did not uh, give Jesus the normal customs of, of acknowledgement. Uh, it didn't didn't give that to him. But this woman, amen, showed, amen, out of her sense of gratitude and appreciation, humility, and thanksgiving, showed him much, amen, uh, and devotion, amen. Now, now, this, this, we're, we're here, we're here. Because I was inspired to speak on this, amen, uh, on this uh, uh, topic tonight, amen, commendable devotion, commendable devotion, praise the Lord, amen. And what, what I'm hoping we can do, that I want to inspire us to examine, for us to examine the quality of our devotion, uh -huh. to examine, and this is wonderful, especially for Consecration Month. Examine the quality of your own devotion. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was an inspiring story, but it's designed to make us think. And we should be examining the quality of our own commitment to Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, how, how, how committed are we? Uh, how devoted are we? We want to examine something else. We want to examine the level and sincerity and the level of, of, of uh, intensity, if you will, of our service. We want to look at ourselves you know, and examine. Uh, am, 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 I, am I serving with all of my heart? Am I serving with all of my soul, my mind, my strength? It is, am I really grateful to God? Do I really do I really appreciate just how much Christ has done for me? And am I showing, demonstrating, and serving him with the intensity that I should because of what he's done? Amen. We need to reevaluate this story. Amen. Uh, should 
cause us to reevaluate the motivation of our faith. What motivates us to do what we do? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do we preach? Why do we sing? Why do we serve? Why? Why? Why do we play instruments in church? Why am, am, am I on the deacon board? And why am I on the usher board? And why, why, why do I come and clean up the church? Why, why do I do this? What is my motive? I got to examine the quality of my motivation to find out if really I'm doing this thing because I love the Lord or I'm trying to get out of it something for myself. Hmm. This little story, amen, should make us think. It should cause us to think. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so as we as we see this, this woman, amen, uh, demonstrating what she does, praise God, uh, it, uh, her activity is motivated by something on the inside. What's happening on the outside is being pushed and motivated by something on the inside. Something has happened to this woman that took her from the streets of Jerusalem, amen, being the biggest and <laughs> one of the most biggest and not notable sinners in the streets to the house of the Pharisee, amen, to stand behind Jesus weeping and washing his feet with her tears and wiping them with the hairs of her head. And, and 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 pulling out of her store uh, the most one of the most expensive ointments that was available at the time, and anoint his feet with that. Uh, as we look at this woman, uh, she 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 achieved that uh, that that uh, level of demonstration uh, not on her own. All right. There were four things that had that have worked that were working in that woman that was endowed upon her that helped her to reach that place to where Jesus himself would commend her devotion because that's what he did. He commended her devotion and he convicted <laughs> or spoke uh, uh, very negatively about Simon and whatever devotion he was putting out. Oh, putting up, bringing uh, Jesus to the dinner to his house. Oh, what was the real motivation behind that? But this woman's devotion, <laughs> unmistakable as to what was going on in her life. Something happened. Uh, God did something. God did. And, and brothers and sisters, and this is what constitutes uh, the differences in our service among between Christian and Christian, saint and saint, church member and church member. Some members love God with a with a huge amount of love. Some church members have seen, Amen, just how much. Uh, Christ has done for them and what he's doing for them on a daily basis and they are extremely grateful to God and it motivates them to serve, to worship, to sing, to obey, to read, amen, and sacrifice for Jesus Christ. But others who, who don't think that he has done much for them, others that don't, re don't even recognize just how much he has done for them don't seem to demonstrate a whole lot of devotion. They can take it or leave it. Uh, they can come or not come. It doesn't bother them. It, it, it does not at all. You know, they, they can serve or not serve, not at all. And some serve, amen, not because of Jesus, but because they're trying to get some kind of pat on the back for themselves. All of that is, and that's why I'm on this, because we don't, we don't need to be going into the rest of 2023 and not have God's common commendation on our lives. I want it now. Amen. 
And I, I do want it later when he's, because I want him to say well done. But I don't want to wait till then to say, and I don't have to wait till then for him to say well done. I can know right now that he's saying well done. All right? And you yourself will be able to say, I know I'm giving God my all. If you be honest, and this, this lesson is designed for us to search ourselves, to search ourselves. Amen. And th those four manifestations of grace, there are four manifestations of grace that worked that bring this woman to the place where she got a commendation for Jesus. One was a, the, the grace of conviction. The grace of uh, two, the grace of uh, repentance. Three, the grace of forgiveness and for the grace of deliverance or salvation. Hallelujah. Four, four, four things are working, at least four. Those, that's all I'm, I'm focusing on for this study. Praise the Lord. Now, in our last uh, Bible class, in our last Bible class, I think we, uh, we dealt with, uh, as we're dealing with the right attitudes, praise the Lord, uh, we, we dealt with the grace of conviction, All right, we dealt with that, praise the Lord. And I hope that you got something out of that. Let me uh, put that on the screen here. Uh, let's see, here we go. The grace of conviction, yes. We dealt with that, a major point in this report, in this in this story that Jesus, uh, report this story that Jesus is telling and, and, and working with, how he's working with, and speaking to, and even teaching Simon. A major point is grace. Grace is needed for devotion. Now, I'm sure all of us would love for have, to have Jesus commend our devotion. All right, but it's got to be. It's got to come from the right place. It can't be superficial. It can't be fake. But in order for me to get past myself, I need grace. Okay? Because this flesh wants a, wants a pat on the back. All right? And it'll do some strange and sometimes silly things to get that pat on the back. All right? Two people can do the exact same things, but have two different motivations for why they do it. All right? And... We need grace. All of us need grace. And, and, and so, so since it's grace, that means we can't pat ourselves on the back for getting there. Conviction. We taught on conviction last Bible class. And I sincerely hope, amen, that you got something out of that particular study. Amen. Uh, and we found out, we found out that, that uh, without conviction, uh, conviction makes possible repentance. Amen. And repentance makes forgiveness possible. And forgiveness allows salvation to be endowed upon us. Amen. So it's very necessary, very, it's very necessary, amen, in this in the process of your salvation. That you have the grace of and we and another, another thing I want to remind you of that we talked about that conviction is also painful. Conviction is painful, amen. Uh and sometimes uh uh, more often than not, uh, we have to encounter uh, some very difficult situations and circumstances for us to really get down to the honesty of who and what we are and what we need from God to make a sincere cry to God. Sometimes, sometimes, amen. Sometimes, amen. Uh, I, I can tell you some stories about myself. I can tell you some stories about others I've dealt with, amen, that, that, uh, 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 that did not have as close a walk with God until <laughs> something happened that caused them to really get serious with God. Amen. And sometimes we have to have a, a painful experience. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a painful experience to get serious with God, but I am saying that when pain does come, some of your most sincere crying will come because of that conviction, because of that pain. Oh, come on now. You and I can say, ouch, all we want. We can spell it. We can read it. We can, we, we, we can copy it. Amen. But let something really hurt us. That ouch would distinguish itself from the other ouch. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. So, so we talked about, amen, the importance of the grace of conviction. And it is God that allows, oh, hallelujah. Ooh. It is God that allows us, amen, to, 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 that helps us to feel that conviction. Yes, it is God. Think back, if you will, and I, I'm, I'm going to move forward. Uh, think back, if you will, amen, of all the enjoyment you had in the world before you knew Christ. And more often than not, it was a unfortunate situation. It was conviction. It was embarrassment. It was something that was painful that caused you to come to Jesus. See, so so I'm saying there, there's a need for it. There's a, there, there, it works. It works. And it is God. God, you see, God had to somehow get you to evaluate what he was offering you over and above what you were already getting when you were in the world. Yeah. And we enjoyed ourselves when we were out there. Yes, we did. I enjoyed what I was doing. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I, I was able to come to, by the grace of God, come to a recognition and a realization that God had something far greater for me than what I could give and get for myself. Hallelujah. And God helped me to make that choice. It was God that brought me to it. Amen. It was a miracle. See, you all are a miracle. If you're looking, if you're looking for a miracle, look in the mirror. Because if you're sanctified and saved today, you are a walking miracle. Amen. Because it took a miracle of God to get you to turn your back on the stuff that you was doing. Amen. And turn to Jesus Christ. That was a miracle. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So now, so now, so now, uh, we want to move on to the next uh, uh, major point of grace, the grace of repentance. This woman in the story, amen, conviction came upon her at some point, amen, and it, 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 it evidenced itself, amen, in this act of repentance as she stood behind Jesus, uh, behind Jesus, amen, and washed his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head, amen. And so the grace of repentance, amen. Don't you know, hallelujah, that if God don't help us, we can't even turn from evil. It was by grace that you were able to turn. God had to help you turn. Not only through the, not only the conviction was uh, recognizing the conviction, amen, but also the, the, the uh, decision to turn. Because, you know, repentance does mean to turn. Turn from one way and turn to another. Turn from one way of living and turn to another. All right? And so we, we, this is about turning from something. But oftentimes we need something to help us to turn. Too many attractive delectable, delicious, and satisfying, fleshly satisfying things are in the world that feed our emotions and feed our lust that is hard to turn away from some stuff that we were doing. But if we did, it was be, if you did, it be, was because God helped you. That was grace. It was grace that brought that woman, amen, into that house of that Pharisee that judged her, it was grace that brought her to brave, amen, his, his consternation, to brave, amen, his judgment. It was, it was grace that caused her to stand behind Jesus and, 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 and cry. That was grace. That was grace. Hallelujah. Grace helped her to get to that place. And so, brothers and sisters, amen, uh, now I got I do have the uh, wrong verse up there, so don't don't turn to that verse that's on your screen there, Amen. Uh, because I, I left that there was a hangover, <laughs> Amen, from the previous slide, Amen. I just want to say to you, grace is of central importance because sin brings God's judgment, and fellowship with God is only possible 
through full and sincere repentance. Let me say that again. Let me read that again. All right. Repentance is of central importance because sin brings God's judgment. And fellowship with God is only possible through full and sincere repentance. God, through his servants, calls people to repent as the only way to escape the judgment and receive the forgiveness and restoration which he offers. Now, uh, in a parable, in a, there's a parable I'm going to take you to, okay? I want you to go to Luke. Amen. Go, go to Luke. Where am I at here? Let's go to Luke uh, chapter number 18. And verse number 11. All right. In, in, in this parable, in this parable, and uh, I hope that you got it, I hope that you have it, you turn to it in your Bible. In this parable, uh, Jesus taught that repentance from the heart is acceptable with God. All right, and, and I'm going to read. I'm going to read it. You follow along with me in your Bibles. All right. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself: God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Because there are two of them. There were two of them that were there praying. Verse twelve. He goes on to say, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14, I tell you, this is Jesus, this is another teaching moment that Jesus has, another teaching moment. I tell you, this man uh, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. In that, in that, in that, in that uh, text, in that, in that uh, parable, Jesus taught that repentance from the heart is, that's what's acceptable to God. In that parable, Jesus emphasized that a change in our motivation and in, our, in the desires of our hearts were more required, that's what we require, more than outward religious performances. Did you catch that? I think I see, I'm going to say that again. In that parable, Jesus emphasized that a change in our motivations and in the desires of, of the heart were required more than outward religious performances. Praise God. Can you see that? This, this is why Jesus is talking here. And this is why we're on this, the grace, the grace of repentance. The grace of repentance. Praise God. Amen. True repentance is 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 uh, turning from the heart. Amen. Not everybody, and, and it's more than just sorrow, y'all. It's more than just sorrow. Amen. It's sorrow that brings about a change in your motivation and in your desires. Praise God. Amen. Jesus said in that text, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Amen. And so uh, <laughs> we see G how Jesus, amen, shines the light on, amen, on uh, true repentance. True repentance. Amen. As I said, it's more than just feeling sorry about something. Amen. It's more than just uh, crying about something because there's many people, amen, that cry about something, praise the Lord, amen, but 
uh, they uh, don't change. <laughs> uh huh. Or as soon as the circumstances change, uh, they go back to doing what they were doing. See, uh, so so tears and boohooing and all that stuff does not necessarily mean that a person is person is ready to change. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, I want I want I want to turn to another scripture here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let me get it there in a minute. I have it there. I have it there in a minute. Okay, let's turn. Let's turn to First uh, Corinthians seven. First Corinthians seven and verse. Let's look at. Uh, oh, let me see here. Let's turn to First uh, Corinthians seven and verse nine, nine. Verse nine. Verse nine. Open your Bibles. Open your Bibles. It says, Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye, get this, ye sorrowed to repentance. See, you see, he's saying, Paul is saying here the same thing I just said a little while ago. It's not just that sorrow itself is not enough. All right. It, the, the sorrow may be an element of, Yes, is oftentimes an element of a repentance and, and a part of it, amen, but it's no guarantee of repentance, all right? Paul says, he's, he's commending the, the uh, repentance of the Corinthians here. He says, ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner. That he might receive damage by us and nothing. See, so the pain of conviction, the pain of the sort of conviction that brought sorrow to them, through Paul rebuking them and teaching them, caused them to sorrow. Not just that they sorrow, but they sorrowed and turned and stopped doing what they were doing. They repented. Look at verse number 10. For godly, godly sorrow, godly sorrow, it distinguishes this from just normal sorrow. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. All right? And it says, worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. There are folk, amen, against sorrow and want to commit suicide. This sorrow, amen, go into depression. Sorrow and go get drunk, you know. Uh, all kind of other things. But the, the, the reason why the trouble has come, the reason why the conviction has come is because God's trying to get you to stop and turn around. Woo! This, this, this month of consecration, hallelujah, let's stop some stuff and turn around. Let's turn. Let's turn. Amen. Get serious with God. Hallelujah. My God. He says, for godly sorrow work repentance and salvation, not to repent it of, but the sorrow of the world work is death. For behold, look at this. For behold, this self-same thing that he sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness. Look at the change. Look at the change it brought. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing. Look at, look at the change. What clearing of yourselves. Yea, uh, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to what? Be clear in this matter. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, <laughs> Amen. Uh, we've got we 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 got to get serious with God. We've got to get serious about our salvation and 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 ask God to re now now you ask well, do I have to do I have to even pray? <laughs> no, you can ask God to give you uh, give you a repentant heart, but it's going to be motivated by something. Amen. It can be motivated. By, by understanding how much pain Christ endured for you on the cross of Calvary, knowing you did not deserve that kind of display. Hallelujah. Somebody said the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle that Jesus ever, ever wrought was not feeding the 5,000, not feeding the 4,000, not walking on the water, not raising Lazarus from the dead. The greatest miracle that Jesus ever wrought was that he stayed on the cross. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. That was the greatest miracle that he, that he, he ever performed because he could have come down. But he stayed on the cross. Hallelujah. Why? For you and I. Why? Because of his love for the Father. He stayed there. Amen. Suffered, bled, and died for you and I. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, fully understanding that, fully understanding how lost you were or are, fully understanding, amen, how, how, mm, how, how corrupt your sin nature is. Get that now, get that now. Because if God can, God has, for those of us that are saved, God has forgiven your committed sins. All right? But John teaches us in the first chapter of 1 John that if any man say he has no sin nature, he's lying. He does not the truth. We have a sin nature. We need the blood and the forgiveness of God every day. And every now and then, brothers and sisters, you and I need to repent of the mess that our sin nature brings to our minds and sometimes from our minds to our mouths and sometimes to our hands and our activities. We need to repent. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God. And it is grace that helps you to do it. It's grace that helps you get there. You couldn't stop sinning if God didn't have it didn't show some grace. You would not feel the conviction of being wrong. Don't you know that there are people committing wrong every day? People lying out of their teeth every day and feel no conviction at all. There are people committing murder and thievery every day and feel no conviction at all, hallelujah. But you and I, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit, amen, convicts us, amen, over the smallest things that we count as small, all right? But the Holy Ghost convicts you when they ain't small, <laughs> all right? But thank God, thank God. And we look back and we wonder, how can people do that? Where is where is their heart? Where is their mind? But don't but don't judge them too bad because you was just like them at one point in time, and they needed the they need the grace of God just as you needed the grace of God to get you where you are today. <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, the grace, the grace, the grace of repentance, the grace of repentance. Praise God, Amen. It is necessary. After 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 the grace of conviction, we need the grace of repentance. The grace of repentance. For example, for example, on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, praise the Lord, Amen. After Peter had preached, and a number of the people had been uh, was was standing there, the Bible says they were pricked in their heart. Should, should I? Should I put should I, should I let's let's go there, I guess. Let's go there. Let's go there. All right, let's go there. All right. All right. Let's go there. Uh Acts. Two. I 
Uh, okay. All right. All right, it says here, I'll put that on the screen for you. After Peter preached in the 37th, see the 37th verse there, 37th verse, it says, now, when they heard, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. I told you that that's conviction. That's the pain of conviction. Pricking. Prick. Stick. Sting. Bitter. Prick. Amen. In their heart. Uh, uh, they didn't just vocalize sorrow. Amen. But they felt that thing. They were convicted. They were pricked in their heart. And when 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 uh the, the pain of conviction comes, it will bring repent. They wanted to repent. And so they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brother, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Here he is. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. First conviction, then repentance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, they had to, they had, they, they asked what to do. And Peter told them the, the proper method. Turn from your ways. Turn from what you're doing. All right? Uh, on the day of Pentecost, after Peter, Peter preached, amen, their hearts were pricked by the truths that they had learned. These individuals requested to know what they needed to do. Peter told them, the first thing they were told to do in order to have remission of sins was to repent. Praise God. And this same order is repeated, amen, again and again and again throughout the scriptures, amen, throughout the scriptures, amen, it is repeated again, again, and again, amen. The grace of repentance, the grace of repentance. And let me say, let, let me say this to brothers and sisters, even after, even after you receive, amen, the grace of salvation, all right. We can, you and I can still fall short every now and then. If you're honest with yourself, sometimes you ain't thinking the right. You ain't thinking right. Uh huh. Sometimes, Amen. You ain't speaking right. Sometimes you find yourself, Amen, in the wrong place at the wrong place more than you should be. Should be being some way you shouldn't be at. Sometimes you'll find yourself, amen, if you be honest, praise the Lord. So even after you receive salvation, and it has been received, we can fall short of the will of God. Repentance, again, is again needed to receive forgiveness, to maintain a right relationship with God. Amen. You don't believe it? Amen. Turn, turn, to, turn to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Look at Acts chapter 5 and verse number 1. I'm not going to put it on the screen. You got to open up your Bible. You got to open up your Bibles. All right. Acts chapter 5. All right. Verses 1. Uh, I'm going to take it down to verse 25. It says, But a certain man named Ananias with uh Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Now they were they were in the church. They were all the church members were doing this. Okay, so th these were some church members. But they, they sold that they, they also sold their possession. But verse 2 says, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now what everybody was doing was they were selling what they had, and they brought the all of it to the apostles' feet, amen, uh, for it to be distributed to the needs of the people of the church members in church, amen. 
to feed to help everybody. To feed they brought all they had and brought Ananias and Sapphira. Amen. They wanted to be able to, to have the accolade and the pat on the back that yeah, you did it too. Uh-huh. But they didn't do it, did they? No. They sold they sold the land, but they did not bring the whole of the thing back to and lay it at the apostles' feet. Now you're gonna find out some here as we go on here. Look at what Peter said. Look what Peter says in the verse three. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to do what? To lie to the Holy Ghost. Oh, see, see, see. Now what had happened was when Ananias and Sapphira were in the planning of to do what they were going to do, the Holy Ghost told them, don't do it. Uh-huh. And so they lied to the Holy Ghost that was in them. You see, brothers and sisters, just because you got the Holy Ghost don't mean that, that you, you can automatically do right. You got a choice. You got to choose to listen and be led of the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost will bring conviction. It is up to you to repent. Given the uh, uh, and, and take advantage of the opportunity to forget to repent that God is bringing upon you through conviction. Amen. But Satan spoke to Ananias and Sapphira, and they concocted this plan. And all while they had the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost was trying to tell them, don't do it, don't do it. That's why Peter says, you lied to the Holy Ghost and kept back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? You could have chose to keep it. And after it was sold, was it that not thine own in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Uh, thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. See, brothers and sisters, amen. They were given an opportunity to repent because they did something wrong. And, and the Holy Ghost uh, uh, convicted them all the way up until the point where uh, even they, they, they went before Peter and lied and said, this was the price of it all. This is was, this was all of it. Mm -hmm. See, this, this is proof that you can have the Holy Ghost and still get it wrong sometime. All right. Now, Ananias and Sapphira didn't have a chance to, uh, I, I, and I, I would, I would, I'm assuming by this, and, and y'all forgive me, uh, that God knew that Ananias and Sapphira were not convicted by Peter's words. They, 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 they were still playing their game. You know how some folks, you know, after you catch them in the wrong, they'll still say, lie, I didn't do it. And lie with a straight face. I didn't do that. I didn't say that. You know, even after you tell them the truth, after they show them the evidence, they can still stare you right dead in your face and say, I didn't do it. That wasn't me. Uh-huh. There are some people like that. And unfortunately, there are people that, that would have, who have mercy, God. Mm. Uh that say they have the Holy Ghost, amen, that need to repent, all right? They need to repent. There was another, another there's another, unless you say, well, that was just a, that was just a one-time thing. No, listen, there's another opportunity that this is no, that sometimes saints need to repent, all right? Sometimes members of the church need to repent. Go to Acts chapter 8 and verse number 13, all right? Here it says, uh, uh, Simon uh, 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 believed the preaching of Philip. This is uh, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself was baptized. He believed also. And he, when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which, he, which were done. Praise God. I will skip down uh, to uh, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. 
But Peter said to him, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent. Here it is. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if preadventure, the thought of thine heart, get this, the thought of thine heart may be forgiven you. Listen, sometimes you got to repent of thinking the wrong thing because God sees what's going on in your mind. Woo. It's not all just about what you do, what you demonstrate, and what you say. It's what's going on on the inside. And God sees what's going on on the inside. Brothers and sisters, this month of consecration, let's get honest with God. Let's get honest with the Lord. Let's, 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 let's bring our thoughts. Sometimes, as it says over there in, 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 in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, we got to bring our thoughts into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. We got to take those, take command of those ungodly thoughts and bring them into alignment with the will of God. Hallelujah. Snatch down the stronghold, hallelujah, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You can do it through the power of the Holy Ghost by grace. Oh, hallelujah. We need it. We need this. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there's too many folk walking around being told that they're okay just like they are. And they're not. God is calling every man everywhere to repent. Repent. What do I repent of? Moral transgressions and moral ungodly, uh, godliness, ungodly uh, desires and lusts. Amen. And those things are just in the heart. Let alone the activities that are ungodly. Every wrong thought you think, every wrong word you say, every time you hurt somebody with your mouth, amen, when you, every time you perpetrate evil and wickedness against anybody, you need to repent. Because that's not the will of God for his people. Hallelujah. Ah, right, brothers and sisters, amen. And it is grace, it is grace, it is grace. That God allows us to, to get there, to truly, to truly repent. Not just be sorry that we got caught, but to truly be sorrowful enough to stop that behavior. True repentance, amen, uh, uh, will cause you to turn from your wicked ways. Turn from ungodliness. Turn from slowfulness. Turn, turn, turn from hypocrisy. Turn. Bible is talking, God is talking to you. The Holy Ghost, if you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost should be talking to you if you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost should be convicting you. And when you are supposed to be somewhere, you're uh somewhere and you're not there, or you're where you're where so you're where somewhere you ought not to be, the Holy Ghost ought to be convicted. If you don't feel no conviction, brothers and sisters, you need to get the Holy Ghost. You need to have the Holy Ghost, and you need to get, you need to understand. The word of God. And listen and believe the word, the teaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Amen. And the grace, the grace, the grace of repentance is necessary. The grace of repentance. We need God to help us. Amen. To repent of our sins. Repent of our ungodliness. God gives us opportunities through the Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. To get it right. Praise God. There's a verse that I am going to put on the screen. Go to, go to uh, uh, Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter number 55 and verse number 6. Now, now, now God sent the prophet to speak to Israel. Amen. Because they were wrong. And the prophets, the prophets cried out, repent. They wouldn't repent. And, but, but the prophet is still saying to them who are in, in, in wrong, even as God is saying to us that are wrong, and God will give you an opportunity to repent. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. 
And I'm putting it on the screen for you. Let the wicked forsake his way. Praise the Lord. And the ungodly man his thoughts. Then he return to the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. 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 God will do it. Amen. But it's got to be real. Your, 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 uh, uh, your, your, uh, uh, repentance, your confession has got to be real, brothers and sisters. Amen. We can't, we can't fake it, try to make it. Amen. God's looking for folk that'll get real with him. He's looking for people to get real. His, his people, his people to get real with him. Praise God. Too many folk trying to tell you, praise the Lord, that, uh, uh, <laughs> You just do the best you can and God will understand. No, repent. Repent of your sin and turn from your ways. Praise God. And God will give you power. He'll give you the power to turn from your ways. Amen. That's what he gave, that's what he gave you the Holy Ghost for. That's what he gave you the power for. Praise God. God wants you, amen, to follow him, to serve him. Amen. In spirit. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We've been, we've been talking about the grace of repentance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Part of that grace, amen, that was given to that woman that came into the house where Jesus was. Praise God. Amen. And she stood behind him. Amen. Weeping. Amen. And washed his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. And anointed his feet with the ointment. Praise God. Amen. And Jesus said of that woman, amen, uh, uh, that her sins are forgiven. For he that uh, uh, is forgiven little, loveth little. But he that is forgiven much will love much. Praise God. What you and I need to understand is God has forgiven us of a whole lot. A whole lot, brothers and sisters. And each and every day, we need the mercy of God because of our sin nature. We need him. We need his forgiveness every day, every hour. And that blood that was shed on Calvary will never, ever lose its power. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, amen. Let's, let's, and those of you that are in Zion, praise God. And you're going to be fasting and praying with us this month of consecration. Amen. Uh, let's let's bow down and hallelujah. I'm on our knees before God. Oh, hallelujah. Surrender. Humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Yea, and turn from ways that do not please him and make a commitment to walk upright before him. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we thank and praise you for this word that we've been talking about tonight. We thank you, God, for the example that you've given us in, in the word of the Lord. Thank you for the teaching of the word of the Lord that's come to show us how to walk up right before you, how to conduct ourselves. Hallelujah. And when, and when any trouble comes, how to get to the place of restoration and forgiveness. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Heavenly Father. I pray that someone out there, God in Facebook land, someone out there in YouTube land, my Lord, my God, will hear these words. Hallelujah. Yeah, and repent of their ways that are not like you. Hallelujah. Oh, and turn from those ways and turn to you, my God, with commitment, my Lord, that will not be turned around. Bless, Father, in a mighty way. Oh, God, hallelujah. We seek you in this month of consecration, Lord God. We lay ourselves before you on the altar of sacrifice. Hallelujah. We cry to you, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, forgive us our sins. Oh, hallelujah. Forgive us our wrong. Hallelujah. Forgive us our bad attitudes. Forgive us our wrong spoken words. Forgive us, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh, God, because we need your favor. We need your mercy. We need your love. We need your divine supply. Hallelujah. Let the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, wash us, atone for us, reconcile us. Let the grace of God be upon us because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, we trust in the blood right now, God. We pray, God, that I pray, oh, Lord, that you would help 
my God, those that are the sound of my voice tonight, hallelujah, oh God, that they will find that place, hallelujah, of true repentance and true worship, that you may commend their devotion in the name of the Lord. We also pray, God, for those, O oh Lord, who may not know you in the beauty of salvation, O oh God, that they also themselves, my Lord, will feel the convicted, the convicting power of God upon them uh, and repent of their sins, hallelujah, and come and get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, that they might be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, hallelujah. I pray also, God, for those who are in, who are afflicted, my God, shut in. Uh, those, my God, who called us for prayer. Those who are depending on the church, hallelujah, to intercede for them, hallelujah, in their affliction, in their infirmity, in hospital rooms, in nursing homes. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, touch them where they are right now, oh, God. Lift them, my God, raise them up, cause them to know, hallelujah, that it's because of your grace, hallelujah, that they are being raised up and being healed in the name of the Lord and give them a mind to serve you my God with zeal that cannot be stopped bless father in the name of Jesus help us oh God bless the church bless us oh God in our consecration hear the cries of the, of the saints of Zion temple hear the prayers of the members of Zion temple oh God hallelujah you know the vision that we have oh father and by grace hallelujah by faith hallelujah it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus hallelujah move obstacles out of the way Lord move hurdles out of the way Jesus supply the need according to your riches and glory oh God oh uh, Oh, mighty one, holy one, bless in a mighty way. And we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name and for the glory of God. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brothers and sisters, neighbors and friends. Hallelujah. I want to put our announcement back on the screen. Praise God that you know what our services are. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see there, Sunday worship, amen, it's at 12 p.m. We're worshiping at El Bethel Apostolic Church, 2316 Taney Place here in Gary, Indiana. That's where we will be on next Sunday in the name of the Lord. Lord willing, and Lord willing, God bless, praise the Lord. On Monday is a prayer call at 6 p.m., amen. There you see the number and the code on the screen, amen. Make it your business, be a part of the prayer, especially, especially, amen, during, amen, this consecration month. And on Wednesday, amen, the Bible study at 6 p.m., you are truly with me teaching, amen. And I also, oftentimes, I'll have my assistant pastor, Elder Tyrone Brown, to teach as well. And then on Friday, Amen. At the Sunday school lesson is to be taught at 6 p.m. Amen. Uh, by the under the auspices and leadership of Minister uh, William Eldridge, superintendent of this church of the uh, Zion Temple Episodic Church uh, Sunday School. Come and be a part of that. Amen. On Friday at 6 p.m. God bless you. All the services are live streamed on Facebook. God bless you. Amen. I hope that you have. Amen. Uh, I counted this this class, this short time I've been with you as a blessing. Amen. Take those scriptures to mind. Take them to heart. God wants to bless us. He wants to commend your devotion. God wants to commend your devotion. He wants your devotion to be commendable in his sight, but it's got to be right in the sight of God. God bless you. Until we come to I meet you again, amen on Facebook. God bless you. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name.